The gloves are on. Exciting. In a recent video, I took apart a, a nickel metal hydride cell. And some of you were saying, well, what's inside an envelope? And the only way to find out what's inside an envelope is to take an envelope bits. So I've got three batteries here. I've got the uh, Tronic 2500 milliamp hour from Lidl. I've got an envelope and I've got this generic little cell out of a uh, solar light, which is supposed to be 600 milliamp hour, but is now 74 milliamp hour. It comes up when I charge it. So let's just start opening them. So I'm going to zoom in a wee bit so you can actually see what's going on here. And I'll use the same technique as before, basically slitting around the top uh, and using the snips to nibble my way in. I have largely discharged these cells for, for safety reasons so that they don't go thermonuclear on me. So let's uh, nibble into this one. In the other one, it was quite an interesting arrangement inside. It was a a sort of mesh, a sort of honeycomb uh, electrode with a sort of black paste on it. So I'm guessing that this one is probably going to be quite similar. So that's the cap coming off. I'm wondering why this loses capacity, this one. It looks very similar to the previous one in the sense that it's got a large sort of hole in the middle of it. Now let's peel this back a wee bit further and see if we can liberate the contents without stabbing myself in the process or slashing myself in this sharp metal. Is this going to come out? It's not really going to come out, it really is. I think it's uh, wound out quite tightly against the outside of the cell. Let's see if we can uh, peel, peel it long ways. I'm trying to keep in a shot here, but uh, there is a possibility I may wander out a shot momentarily uh, in the excitement of tearing this to bits. Focus is uh, going to be a bit variable as well because I'm, uh, I sort of got a rough focus position down about here, but I may uh, nudge it a wee bit too high when I'm uh, getting excited again. So we've got the separator. I'm guessing that when we come, come to the uh, in a loop, it's going to be the separator is going to be the main thing, but I'm not, not sure if it's going to be visually different. Uh, this one is already showing a slight difference. It's showing the. I'll, I'll get the baseball cap off so it doesn't rub in the microphone. Uh, it's showing. I'm seeing a perforated mesh again here. Seems to be a common factor in them. Uh, I have tried using this cutter, uh, which is designed for cutting pipes, uh, but it's not been that successful, mainly because they do seem to be uh, coiled quite tightly against the side. So I'll keep nibbling in this way and uh, use that as a last resort. Hmm, it is quite tricky, isn't it? Another possibility is maybe I could actually spiral that in. There's really not... Oh, there is. There's a modest amount of the chemical. The main differences between these will be the, the a chemical combination and the separators. I'm not sure the exact science behind the Eneloop, the low self-discharge ones. I don't know if it's down to the separator just being... Um, oh, that's also... This is why it really wasn't come out easily. It's kind of physically eaten into the... Uh, outer shell. But the science uh, of the end loop, I'm guessing, is not just the choice of the chemicals used, the metal hydrides, but also probably the separator being less leaky, because this looks almost like a sort of fibrous material that's been used, as it was in the previous cell. Yeah, th this is not easy. I get the horrible feeling that the other batteries are going to be the same but probably worse because they're going to be so jam-packed with the material. I think I'm going to have to just unwind it spirally like pyrotenax cable. Right, so here is what's inside. Let's bring the paper towel in again. So this is what's inside that one. It's very dry. I'm guessing that's probably why it's lost its capacity. 
these lights tend to get very hot. The battery, should I say, well, the, the whole light, uh, the solar lights tend to get quite hot. So I'm wondering if uh, part of the issue with them losing capacity is the electrolyte gradually leaking out. Is there a way you could make a hole in them and just squirt some more electrolyte in? So this one is just as that previous one was. It's a, a mesh with holes in it. And then this compound squished on. Here's the positive. It's not very big, is it? Okay, so that's the reference. Here's the negative, there's the positive, and there's a separator that's making a huge mess. I shall bundle that and bring in a new bit of paper towel, and then we'll take a look in the inner loop. New bit of paper towel. Let's get the inner loop open. I have discharged this, well, I hope I've discharged it. If I haven't discharged it, it's going to be quite violent because these things can sink quite a lot of current. Similar-ish construction. Oh, it's going to be a wee bit harder to nibble this one open. It's got a tar-like seal, it's a black seal there. I say tar, it's obviously not going to be tar. I'll move this out of the way, it's going to provide better contrast, isn't it? And this one uh, should hopefully be jam-packed full of chemical. Because uh, this is one of the sort of cells that they're trying to get the absolute maximum capacity into the area that they've got. So uh, how's this working? Ooh. That's kind of interesting for a start. Right, let's start uh, peeling this down. Again, the similar spiral construction, which, I mean, I suppose ultimately that makes sense. Let's cut that off. This uh, blue seal, it just, oh, it just sits on top. Oh, it is rammed, you know, it really is just spiraled tightly in there. So I'm guessing this is going to be somewhat longer than the other one. What have we got to beat here? We've got about, so we've got uh, electrode-wise, we've got this to beat, which is about, Two inches, 50 millimetre, maybe just a wee bit more, maybe closer to 60 millimetres. Since this is so tight, I'll just uh, try and uh, wind it down to full length. It also looks, the electrode looks much, much smoother. It also looks thinner. That makes sense if they're trying to squeeze the material in. So the sort of the metal holding mesh, if you will. I don't I don't know if it's going to be a mesh. We'll find out when it's open. Opening my inner loop so you don't have to. This is actually so tight it's quite hard to get the snips in here. Interesting though. But very, very finicky to get into. Hmm. Is it going to just pop out? No, more certainly it's going to pop out. That just feels really solid. It feels like a hard core, which again, I would expect. This makes me think that the really ultra high capacity cells where they try and squash as much in as possible, the sort of 3000 milliamp hour ones, they must really compress that to get it in. I wonder how they actually do that. I wonder how they slip it into the tube. Perhaps they, with these cells, they rely on it sort of springing back open once it's in. This is uh, getting closer to the point that I can unroll this. Yes, it is. With uh, a little finale, a little uh, blue disc. Okay, let's bring the towel in and unroll this. Is it going to unroll? Yes, it is a mesh, but it's very thin mesh. It starts off, the outside starts off much smaller holes than it gets on the inside here. So though it appears to be one piece of mesh, uh, it's got the smaller holes where it's actually pressing against the outside of the case. 
And then it's got the larger holes. I'm not really sure why that is. Oh, and this is just odd. It feels strange. It's not that big. It doesn't feel that there's any mesh at all. It just feels like some sort of a compacted material. And yet, uh, I think there is a mesh in there. But it's so thin, and the material's so thick on the mesh that it's very hard to actually peel it away. When you do try peeling it away, the mesh actually starts to crumble. Is there a mesh or is it just reinforced in some way? That's just so soft. I can see the sort of metal structure inside, but it almost looks like it's just actual like wire mesh, you know, just like the, the woven mesh. Very hard to actually pick it off. It's so thoroughly ingrained into it. I don't think it's a punched mesh like this. Okay, so that's what's inside that cell. Let's go on to the next cell, which is the higher capacity uh, Energy 2500. This one, it's coloured red at the end because when I get my cells to keep them in sets, I colour code them. I just get a sharpie and just run it round the end to match the cells up for the different packs. So let's uh, get this one open. So the science of the capacity so far seems to be that they just jam more stuff in to be non-scientific about it. And uh, the mesh, I'm guessing that's just to do with uh, the c c current, you know, uh, being able to pass a lot of current down to the negative side onto the case, or may maybe just make a good coupling to the case. Oh, that's uh, something I didn't look at. The separator. Is there anything really obvious about the separator in the... No, there isn't. Uh, hold on. Wait, no. Let's get the right battery, shall we? That's the separator for the... It's two different types of material, by the look of it. That's odd. It's the same fibrous type material. This one seems quite dry, and this one actually seems to be the one that's uh, moist, if you will. Or is it just the fact it's got that coating stuck onto it? They, look, they do look different. This one's a much darker colour. That's just probably part of the science of any loop. Okay, let's get this one open. I think I'm doing fairly well and staying in shop most of the time. Okay, there's a little plastic topper, as another one. Which I'm guessing that if I pull that out, it will uh, reveal that it is jam packed again. I th should think it would be, given this is the highest capacity cell of these. Oh, that's not coming out too easy. No, it's, uh, I think we'll have to get in a bit further before I can take that out. Oh, there it comes. Oh, that is, yeah, it's just jammed tight in there. I wonder what the significance of the two uh, gauges of the cell, the mesh is another one. This one again looks like a fairly fine mesh on the outside. Is it going to be the same on the inside? I'll go with a spiral approach of this one if I can. And keep nudging back to the centre of the camera. I 
Yeah, this one just feels rock solid. It really feels so tight. I wonder if the uh, when they put the they I wonder if they squirt the wet electrolyte down the end, and that kind of makes it expand out a bit, or if it's just tightly rolled a machine and then like physically just forced in. Although you'd think uh, if it caught the edge of it that it would damage the outer coating. Let's uh, get this right down to the bottom and see if we can get this off. I'm guessing there's going to be a little plastic separator at the bottom again. Yes, there's a little red plastic separator in the bottom of that. Right, next bit of paper towel. Not that it really matters because I made a huge mess anyway. And let's unroll it. So it's starting off with fine mesh. Is it changing size? This is pinging chemicals everywhere. The mesh is just pretty much staying the same size all the way along in this one. It's not a huge mesh. Yeah, same size. Uh, they've got a sort of area that's not got the holes punched in it, which uh, I'm guessing is probably the same either side, and that's where they cut it. Oh, right, okay, that's, uh, there is actually, there's flames. Okay. Right. Yeah, not, not sure the science of this, but this is all going on fire quite rapidly. So that's quite an exciting chemical. Oh, this isn't necessarily quite good. Where is my... Explosion containment pie dish because my bench is rapidly going far. Right, okay. Uh, row, right, one moment, please. <coughs> so that means this chemical here is probably combustible. And what about this stuff here? That's a bit interesting. I wonder how much I've pinged into different parts of my workbench here. Is it just that version that's going to do that? Right, so uh, zooming back out. Yes. Right, so it turns out that if you open the... Uh, I mean, that was fully discharged. I wonder if it's just reacting with air. That's definitely not something you want to stick in your bin, is it? So uh, that was the um, little battery, the... Yeah, the 2,500 milliamp power one. I wonder why it... It must be reacting with the oxygen in the air. That's odd. So, yes. So that was the anode material, I think, uh, is just burst into flames, apparently, when you open this, this cell. That That's not what I was expecting, as you may notice from my sudden loss of uh, knowing what to say there. Yes, unexpected results. So... Um, Yes, I'll open my cells. Don't you open yours. It turns out that they burst into flames when you open them, even when they're discharged. Quite exciting. Oh, my workbench is even more burnt now. Anyway, uh, a little bit of research says, it turns out it wasn't a positive electrode. Do not open battery. The negative electrode material may be pyrophoric. It sure is. Should an individual cell from a battery become disassembled, spontaneous combustion of the negative electrode is possible. This is much more likely to happen if the electrode is removed from its metal container. There can be a delay between exposure to air and spontaneous combustion. And I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, while I was taking that cell to bits, I don't know if it was just reflections or actual little bits of the material were actually spontaneously just fizzling and combusting. And uh, it was the larger bit was the more dangerous bit. I've still got bits here of random batteries. And now, rather annoyingly, at two o'clock in the morning, I'm going to have to tidy my whole bench, really like empty everything off it, because I want to make sure I find every bit of that material just in case it bursts into flames in the middle of the night. That wouldn't be good. So, um, yes, the moral of the story is uh, don't open nickel metal hydride cells. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them can burst into flames.